Okay, um, let's start our uh, next topic uh, that is on smart sensors concept, okay. So I'll tell you what, what it is and like you know, how it is very useful for many different sensors and then like you know, we'll uh, talk a little bit more on compliant mechanisms, it's, uh, it's a little bit of it analysis and, and things like that for mechatronic purpose, like you know, there's kind of mechanisms that we would we have seen in the CD-ROM drives and, and things like that. Okay, uh, so let's begin uh, with the concept here for the smart sensors. Mm, let me get the pointer right. Okay, so uh, so you need to think about like you know, how we can make a sensor which can be smart uh, in some sense, in the sense like um so it can self calibrate itself okay or uh, maybe like um, you know it can have a, a range and resolution you know tussle usually there is a tussle between the range and resolution the sensors that can measure at a very large range the resolution will be typically low sensor that can measure at a smaller kind of a range their their, their resolution can be high okay so this tussle between resolution and range okay is always there like you, know, you cannot have something which is measuring very large kind of a um, quantity at very 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 high resolution uh, i'll give you an example uh, you have seen um, same say, say we talk of like a you know, measurement of the weight okay so uh, if you go to the um, if you want to weigh like you know, weigh gold for example uh, you go to uh, this uh, goldsmith or um, you know uh, jewelry manufacturer and like you know you give the jewelry to weigh they will have this small little micro balance which will give you very very accurate kind of a weight of the jewelry that you are measuring now uh, if you talk of like you no know, other extreme like you know there are these uh, weigh bridges you might have seen in the in the um, what do you call uh, your uh, some some kind of a you know uh, there are these uh, vendors who, who are like having these weigh bridges which can weigh the cars actually cars and trucks weight uh, you know they can measure so uh, you'll find like you know, the way you have these uh, gas pumps or like uh, the petrol pumps like that these these weigh bridges uh, will be there uh, if you ask them like you know, what is the accuracy of measurement of the weight it will be in hundreds of uh, ten, if not like you know, tens of kgs okay uh, mostly hundreds of kgs they, they weigh like you know, tons of uh, material there okay so uh, there is a huge kind of a uh, um, difference in the resolution of measurement or like you know the accuracy of measurement in uh, you know on one side like you know, if you go for a very small kind of a sensor uh, very small kind of a range uh, like a gold measurement versus like in you know, a car measurement of course uh, one sees a need whether there is a need for like such a high accuracy oh, we don't need like you know the the car weight to be known to such a high accuracy but the point here is that like you know the, the things which are made to um, work with a larger range typically give you a low, lower resolution okay and if you now demand like you no know, though i want both uh, you know little bit extend the range of measurement okay say for example micro balance can go up to maybe 80 100 grams kind of a weight they can measure but if you want to measure like you no know, say up to 500 grams okay by the with the same resolution or up to 1 kg with the same resolution how can we make it possible okay that is a kind of a question here so think about it like you know what kind of a thing comes to your mind to to do that okay so we'll talk and discuss a little bit more about this uh, example what kind of ideas that can be incorporated to enhance like the range of uh, 
so let's talk specifically about this weight measurement okay so how the weight measurement principle is done okay think about that and we'll come to that in a minute so let's say you have to enhance the range of the sensor with this kind of a uh, specific example of uh, weigh balance okay the so weigh balance typically has a spring okay you, you put some weight this spring will deform and like it will uh, it will go down and typically on the scale you will see some weight measurement done this is one of the ways of uh, measuring weights okay other way you uh, you may have this kind of a, you know uh, the balance that uh, your uh, sub chi vendors they use but i try to know we just focus about you know this kind of a system for weight measurement okay uh, so so the the markings here okay are uh, typically say say 1 mm marks which which we can identify from one to other maybe 1 mm we can identify now uh, if i want to weigh very very small quantity or or very very small kind of a resolution kind of a measurement then i i use a spring which is uh, a little low kind of a flexibility okay a uh, little low rigidity okay highly flexible spring so even for a small weight it's going to get deformed and i can see uh, its marking on the on the weigh scale here okay uh, now if i get this spring uh, to go smaller in the uh, stiffness hmm, or higher flexibility then you see that like you know from this point to this point if the pointer can move uh say so this point being a limit that spring gets kind of completely compressed here and uh, this is a starting point uh, so this so is the range that you will be able to measure is proportional to like the stiffness times the displacement okay so that will be the range so this is a whole displacement that can be possible for the spring and then stiffness times that will be like, like a small range because like no matter the stiffness is very very small okay if i increase the stiffness then like you know the 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 range can be increased but then what happens is still for a moment of uh, 1 mm like i'll have to see that like you no know, larger weight needs to be put so that means like my resolution for this 1 mm kind of a measurement is going to be uh, like you no know, little lower for higher stiffnesses okay so this is a point uh, like you know, can you all see this point so now uh, we are not right now really you know what what it about like you know the there is a friction that will also play some role and all those kind of things are going to be there okay uh, so so we are not right now kind of like bothered about those things okay so uh, the question is then how do you kind of make like you know enhance this range of uh, measurement even for a small resolution Uh, i mean even for a high resolution kind of a small stiffness kind of a uh, scenario in in this particular case okay so so let's talk about that now mm-hmm. so so you appreciate this point that you know the sensitivity would decrease if we have a demand for higher range or resolution will below for higher range okay and uh, vice versa hmm. so uh, if you want to increase weight then like you no know, i propose that okay we put an actuator in this sensor okay suppose we put an actuator in this sensor okay uh, so i i form little like a you know, small feedback system around this uh, sensor such that like you no know, the actuator is now giving an additional force okay so i measure this uh, on the scale okay take its feedback to my actuator and then like you no know, actuate the actuator such that this reading always points to zero so if i even if i put some weight there like uh, then like actuator will come in place so 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 look the, the sequence will happen like that okay i put a weight on this surface then this pointer is going to kind of like you no know, go down that means there is some error that is produced apart from away from the zero position and then that error is fed back to the actuator and actuator kind of gives some force and brings it back to zero okay 
and uh, this way like you know you can always maintain like you know some small um, some some uh, like you know zero uh, as a balance okay it's called null balance okay so you null balance the system always no matter how much is a weight i'm putting i mean my system is always balanced and now depending upon what is the strength of your actuator you can get now the the higher forces possibility okay so you can use a spring still like you no know, lower stiffness but now the spring has no deformation at all because actuator is providing like you no know, the force to balance the weight so that is a kind of a idea that is uh, utilized here to enhance the range by using an actuator okay so one can think of like you know what kind of actuator how we can put it and all those kind of things we are not right now worried about okay but making sure that you know the actuator also doesn't have somehow any kind of a you know additional friction force and thing like that okay so uh, so the, can you see this idea so with this idea one can kind of like you know enhance the range of sensor and uh, keep the resolution same and uh, you get some additional advantages Just that any non linearities that are existing in the system they won't bother you here okay sorry about my mobile okay uh, so no non linearities in the system like no say for example a spring as you deform more and more it would have it might become non linear okay instead of like no the scale is linear but spring is behaving in some kind of a non linear fashion because of the large deformations okay uh to compensate for that you would have like no this marking also put in some kind of a non linear way but uh, because we are doing this null balance with uh, actuator here we don't need to do that okay you see this is a big advantage that you you get okay by by doing this uh, so now one can think about okay little bit more detail about uh, this concept and say okay oh look if i'm doing this okay putting this actuator here how do i know what is the actuator force i should apply so that will come from some kind of a feedback control law and one can think about what kind of feedback control law you can put here okay so you have studied some like you know pd control you know pd pid kind of controls or a proportional control one can kind of employ that and say that okay oh look if i uh, apply the actuator force proportional to the error okay with some kind of a gain constant when slowly like you know it will go go back to make it, make the error zero okay so that is how i i can determine the actuator force mm, um so so you 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 you, you might have like you no know, um, some other kind of a ways you just proportional algorithm may or may not give you great uh, kind of advantage or those kind of things can be discussed more but but the basic concept is is uh, essential to kind of capture here is that like you no know, i'll always maintain like a null balance or zero uh, kind of a reading on the scale and okay then the question is okay look i am maintaining zero there but how do i know how much is my weight that i am putting on the surface oh that can be there then calculated by just saying seeing like you know how much is a extra actuator force that you need to apply to maintain that uh, balance okay so when i put something on the on the on the on the weight balance i'll i'll uh, have to apply some actuator force which will happen through some kind of a feedback control strategy and finally once it is settled in the final position whatever is a like you no know, the value that bias value that i need to apply i'll i'll get to know from that value uh, what is a weight that i have put on the surface okay so that is how like you no know, one can get um, uh, the the actuator Based on actual force, like you know, what is your uh, weight that is put on the on the surface? Hmm? Okay. Now uh, one can do some kind of a mathematics to to do like you know that okay, the actual force is a proportional uh, KP kind of a control we can do. Then how do you analyze this system and things like that? One can do a lot of uh, this kind of a uh, mathematical jugglery. beyond this to find out okay what kind of proportional constant i should use or do i need uh, in addition some kind of a derivative also probably you'll need a derivative control also to kind of make sure your your system settles into the final position rather than oscillating in the in the in the steady state 
okay um, typically like you know that friction will be there in these kind of uh, practical systems so even if you don't put uh, the derivative control in place like you know there, there will be a natural damping that will happen because of the friction in the system and like you know your system will finally settle down okay it's not going to continue for, uh, oscillating forever okay so uh, you can kind of uh, think of this mathematical model to represent like you know this dynamics of a system and then like you know uh, for formulate like you know your control strategy and validate uh, how your error behavior happens and things like that okay so uh, maybe you can try this exercise yourself and then like you know look at some of these uh, developments that are given in the slide okay so so uh, for any kind of a system we'll come to this in more in the detail when i when we start modeling different different kinds of systems but uh, typically for modeling any system say say you have understood this system you know actuator there is some some mass that will happen for this uh, you know the the stage that the dead weight of the stage itself and then there is a stiffness and then uh, some kind of a um, you know the damping you can consider here and then this becomes like a simple spring mass damper system and uh, for which like you know you know very well uh, known equation which is uh, you know the force that i'm applying on the system will be mass times acceleration plus c times x dot and plus k times x will be will be there in addition okay so um, so so uh, so this f that we talk here like you know uh this f is is a force of actuator okay uh that has to balance like uh finally like you no know, some kind of a dynamics of a system okay i'm sorry let me switch off this mm -hmm. yeah okay um so um the 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 steady state value of the force okay will will give you the final reading okay so uh, the expression you know so so these are the two expressions for the force one is like you no know, based on the dynamics of the system and other expression is what you would uh, develop as a control strategy okay based on the feedback so this uh, the previous expression that you saw here was we are considering that okay we'll apply the actuator force to be equal to this amount okay so that was our feedback kind of in some sense for the for the system so when xt is null balance or zero then like you no know, you will get this as a feedback expression for the for the force and then like you no know, this is a this is a system dynamics like i think this are there is a term corresponding to the spring missing here k times x also will be coming as a additional term here but um uh, and then then like you no know, we'll apply like you no know, some proportional control kp times Uh, you know x as as this force okay so that's how that's how the things is things are going to happen okay uh so right now the friction in the system is neglected mm. so so when you do analysis of how this control would work or like you know how this control will uh, will will take care of or settle in the system into then like you know you need to substitute this value of force uh, from like you know, as you are proposing as a control here in the expression of dynamics and then do the analysis and then like you know you'll be able to find out uh, the the details of how this force is uh, going to how this proportional feedback that you are proposing is going to affect your system or affect your state of x of the system or you can like you know convert this state x into the error dynamics and like you know study like you know what will happen to the error how will it go to zero will it go to be zero instantaneously or will it oscillate how i can kind of have like you know the settling time of that uh, oscillations controlled all those kind of things one can talk about in in lot more details okay so we'll come to some some more kind of uh, analysis of such kind as we as we progress okay you have done something already but now we'll see from little bit more practical perspective uh, when the friction and other thing terms are there or if you want to model the motor also like the actuator also in the in the system in some some way Okay, how do you kind of take care of uh, some of these things? That will be seen here. Okay, so um, by the way, to balance this, if we use uh, a screw kind of a system to drive, uh, 
actuator means like a you know, motor and a screw type kind of a system then since it is not back drivable that will not work here okay so anything which is, which is having a friction a lot of a lot amount of friction will will not work for for such kind of a thing so uh, we we will need to employ uh, here uh, a non contact linear actuator which will kind of drive the system to kind of make things in zero so you need to be aware about this like you know, we say we have seen okay oh, linear motion means like you no know, we'll put some kind of a rack and pinion or like you no know, this uh, screw kind of actuator if you start putting that it will for certainly balance like you no know, this through null balance but now the kind of force that i need to apply is the system is locked in this place actually you any place you you to it take the system will be locked so even if you now say okay if it is at zero and i place some more weight on the system since it is not back drivable i i'm not going to get any deformation up here so the screw kind of actuators will not work here unless they are like you no know, very smooth back back drivability is there okay so typically screw screw actuators will not have a back drivability so here we need to have a non friction non contact kind of a um linear actuators to to drive the system okay then things are going to work here much better okay so uh, you can think about and like you know see whether you, you yourself are able to kind of do this uh, you know error analysis here with uh, one control expression or some other kind of a control expression and like you no know, we can talk about that in uh, in more details uh, later okay